And one of the nicest descriptions that I found of the way botany works is a description of a man who came to Botany Bay in the 1790s, so very early on in um, Sydney's history. And he described walking from the settlement of Sydney down to Botany Bay, looking at the plants that were there and, and collecting. And he had this lovely line that talked about making a slow and roundabout walk. And it suddenly occurred to me that when I walk somewhere, I'm usually in a hurry, I'm just moving from point A to point B. When a botanist walks somewhere, particularly through a landscape they haven't been in before, it has to be such a ponderous and considered thing. And it, it occurred to me then that you just move through a space so differently when your conduit to what's there is these plants. It's not, you don't just walk anymore, you really, you really process all the information in a, in a quite different and quite slow and sort of poetic kind of way I guess. I'm responding to the plants through the people who are involved with them and that's the thing I think that readers really want to know about. I mean across any discipline in science not just with botany there is this perception that it's very impenetrable that the stories are hard that if you don't have a degree in physics you're not going to understand what's going on and you can always tell scientific stories through the people who are doing the work. If you have a passion for a science, you are immediately an interesting person because you have a particular prism through which you live so much of your life. It takes you to different places, you do different things there. You're often quite obsessive about what you're looking for and how you interact with those places. So as a writer, that's just fabulous mm. material. I would never go so far as to say that people were absurd. Certainly what I respond to is, is the extremity and the commitment in these people. There's a beautiful image um, when Banks does arrive on the endeavour with Captain Cook. Because botany is a big part of what he's interested in, it's probably his primary scientific fascination. He's brought a lot of paper so that he can press the specimens that he's picking around the countryside everywhere he goes. And some of the paper that he's bought are the proof pages from Milton's Paradise Lost. And I love this image that, you know, here's this man, by him fetching up on the shores of Botany Bay, the whole history of Australia changes. He's the one who advocates settlement so strongly later on. He's the reason that Arthur Phillip and the First Fleet and the convicts all turn up here. Um, he's the reason that you know European science is suddenly so intrigued by these weird plants and animals that exist in this place you know 12,000 miles away from where they are and there he is of all things that he could be you know pressing his banksias and his angophoras and his eucalypts and his violets and whatever else in he's sitting there and pressing them into pages of Paradise Lost which is a gift of metaphor for a writer. And there's a beautiful scene where there is so much new stuff at Botany Bay that he takes a morning off collecting and he spreads all his specimens out on the sand around him. And I just have this image of this very, you know, brushed and powdered English gentleman. He's an aristocrat, he's this incredibly privileged man sitting in Botany Bay under some fabulous blue sky with all these bits of paper around him and pressed into those bits of paper are the first things that Europe will see of the plants of this country. They're the beginning of, of our story, I guess, the beginning of, the, of the, the British scientific attachment to this place.